In this video, guys, we're going to look at volume in the FX market. Stay tuned. Hey, traders, a very warm welcome to you. So FX market decentralized. What does that mean? That basically means that you or I can do a deal together. I can buy one billion yen from you using my dollars or vice versa. That's not reported in a centralized exchange as opposed to a centralized market. If I want to buy a million pounds worth of a million dollars worth of Apple stock from you, I can't buy it from you just like that. I have to buy it from the stock exchange, whichever exchange is trading on NASDAQ or whatever stock we're talking about. And it has to go through there. So there's a centralized reporting venue. Right. So what does that mean for us in terms of trading and volume? Volume, very easy to look at in stocks. Apple stocks traded X amount of volume over X period of time. It's reported by the exchange. Same as if we're trading crude oil futures, trading on NYMEX, trading FTSE futures, commodity futures, whatever it may be. Forex is different. So what does that mean for us in charts? So if we're looking at charts, and normally we've got a chart here, and most of the time we've got volume on the bottom, and we're using it to make decisions, right? We've got a chart doing this and this and this, whatever it may be, and we're using the volume below to make a decision if we're trading something. In FX, we don't have a centralized total volume because banks are doing deals with other banks. Everyone's doing their own little deals together. Interbank deals are going on. People are doing deals with retail. It doesn't, there's no centralized exchange. So often, if we look at something like TradingView, which we've talked about before as a good charting package, good free charting package, especially for FX. If you look on TradingView, we'll see we put in Euro US dollar here we can see volume. So what is that volume coming from? If we don't have a centralized exchange, where is that coming from? That is basically coming from the feed that TradingView use. Now, TradingView use different brokers feeds, bigger brokers and feed in the price, then they use the volume that the broker provides. Now that volume is gonna be based on how much flow is coming through them. So they're making their own volume up. If they're big enough, they've probably got a reasonable gauge on what's happening. So as price goes to a new high here, there's going to be a big inflow in volume as people get stopped out, as people look to buy that. The point is people are paying attention to that level. As you would expect, if that was just a, a stock chart or a normal chart, you'd expect there to be perhaps, sometimes there isn't, some sort of increase in volume or participation when a big level breaks. So Back to the initial point, can we rely on this volume to make decisions on? If we're using a chart that has some kind of volume in FX, does it make any sense? Well, I think it depends on what you're doing. If you are, let me get my pen here, get the purple. If we're using something like a volume weighted average price, which is a very nice indicator to use, and that's gonna look something like this on our chart. Okay, VWAP, that's obviously using volume and it's using price. Can we use that? We probably can. That's going to be close enough representation. It's not going to be a true number. You know, the actual number, whatever that may be, you know, they might report it as 100,000. You know, in the real world, the total amount of volume might well be a billion or a million or whatever it may be. The order of magnitude is not going to be correct. However, the height and the kind of, um, you know, patterns are going to be similar because it just taking that broker flow is probably going to be a decent cross section of the overall volume not necessarily all the time of course you might have a big bank doing a deal with another big bank for 10 billion which would skew the whole thing but the point is we're looking at general participation so if you're using something like a vwap a volume weight average price yes you can get away with using that volume using that volume as part of the feed for the vwap because it's going to be about right that line is going to be give or take, it's not gonna to be too far off to a few degrees either side. So if you're using it to buy or, or whatever the trade is, that's fine. If you're using like an on balance volume uh, indicator, again, same kind of thing. What I'd be cautious of uh, uh, with using volume uh, of the FX market and taking like an, a rough estimate of volume is using actual individual bars. So in other words, you know, as we break out, yes, you might see increase in volume, but don't be so specific and say, I need to see X percent of this or start writing algorithms based on previous volume bars because you're going to get rogue bars based just on that broker. They're going to be, un you're going to have reporting that's wrong. They're going to have maybe some low bars here because no one's, you know, it's going to be not quite as accurate. It's accurate enough to look at it and say, hey, you know, this is the general pattern, but it's not ac fully accurate to say, 
that is truly what's happening in the, in the market, as you would do if it was a stock. You know it's accurate with the stock because it's coming through a centralized exchange. So some reason if you're using it as part of a formula for some broader indicator that's based on volume or VWAP, whatever it is, fine. If you're losing, using it just to see the change, and also it, it, you'll visually be able to see, you know, perhaps when the when the market opens, I know it's 24.5, but say the London market opens for pound or for euro, the European market, stock markets open, you'll see the volume change there. So again, nice visual representation to see when you want to get involved in that and maybe seeing price spikes and, and stuff like that, and price spikes and volume spikes coinciding together, but actually using a finite number, be a little bit cautious of that. But for generally speaking, you're going to get away with it. It's not too bad. And most charting platforms will have some kind of useful volume on there. All right, guys, that's volume in the FX market. Take care to the next one. Bye-bye.